a congressional primary election in Texas is getting national attention for what it could mean for the future of the Republican Party and for other incumbents facing far-right challengers. Laura Barone-Lopez has more. That's right, Amna. Like past recent election cycles, more extreme far-right candidates are running up and down the ballot this year. In Texas, incumbent Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez, who has worked across the aisle on a number of issues, faced such a challenge. Last night, Gonzalez narrowly staved off the far-right YouTube personality, Brandon Herrera, receiving 50.7 percent of the vote to Herrera's 49.3 percent. To discuss what these growing divides mean for the future of the Republican Party, I'm joined by former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh. Congressman, thanks so much for Good being here. Good to be here. with you. Brandon Herrera forced Congressman Gonzalez into this runoff and was attacking Congressman Gonzalez specifically for voting for bipartisan bills on gun safety, mm -hmm. on gay marriage, and Congressman Gonzalez barely won by 407 yeah. votes. What's your big takeaway from this? It's, uh, it, it was a unique race because without the issue of immigration, which is the biggest issue down there, Gonzalez would have lost. I mean, he barely won against a far-right, gun-loving kook who would have beaten him if that was the only issue. But I think immigration and I think Abbott's endorsement of Gonzalez really helped push the him Texas over. The Texas governor, Abbott. Yes. And Gonzalez called himself a Trump supporter, uh, said that he supports a former president, but he is someone who appears willing to work with Democrats and work across the aisle. Yes, he won, but do you think that there is a future in the Republican Party for more centrist, moderate, bipartisan Republicans? No, no. <laughs> well, A, you have to be a Trump supporter. Uh, and even Gonzalez, who is thought of as more of a centrist Republican, he's all in with Trump, and he got down on his knees and said the greatest things about Trump during this campaign to help him win. So you have to be that, or there's no room in the party. But no, the base of the party still wants the most extreme MAGA voices. And so if you don't support Trump, you could lose in a primary. And, I mean, you're someone who rode uh, in on the Tea Party yeah. wave. Uh, do you feel as though you or other Tea Party candidates uh, pushed the party down this pathway at all? Oh, absolutely. We helped lead to Trump. I've said this often. The base of my former party is radicalized. We helped to radicalize them. Um, and and that, that's, a, that's a scary thing. But, but in those days... It was where you stood on the issues that made you either a rhino or a far-right Republican. Now, it's all about where do you stand on Trump. And if you oppose Trump, like Joe Walsh or Liz Cheney or Adam Kinzinger, you have no future in the party. So you're saying in your day it was more about policy. It was all about policy. You were a crazy Tea Party conservative or an establishment Republican, but that was where you stood on issues like guns and immigration. I want to ask you also about some other Republican candidates, one in Minnesota, Royce White. Uh, he hasn't won the GOP primary for the U.S. Senate uh, there, but he has been endorsed by the state Republican Party. He's appeared uh, next to conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, and he also appeared with Trump's former chief strategist Steve Bannon. And on uh, when he was talking to him, he criticized women. Well, let's just be frank. Women have become too mouthy. As the black man in the room, I'll say that. He's not the only GOP candidate who has made derogatory comments about women. There's also the North Carolina GOP gubernatorial candidate, Mark Robinson, who has cast doubt or mocked accusations from women during the Me Too movement, has said that he embraces titles like male chauvinist pig, according to the 19th News report. Is misogyny becoming a pattern amongst GOP candidates? Um, yes, just like bigotry and uh, anti-transgender, LGBTQ feelings. Look, it's, it's cruelty. Trump is cruel. And cruelty right now sells in the party. This stuff works. Uh, the, the, the cruel, mean things that these Republican candidates will say about women or people of color, or again, transgender Americans, right now in the party that works and that sells. And that's pretty darn sad. Also, when we're talking about 
for the former President Donald Trump. There's Republican Congressman Bob Good of Virginia. Mm -hmm. He's the chair of the Hard Right Freedom Caucus. He's facing a challenge from the right in John McGuire, a state senator who attended the Stop the Steal January 6th rally. Uh, and, you know, Bob Good himself voted to overturn yeah. the election results in 2020, but still Donald Trump endorsed his challenger. Does this ultimately just come down to loyalty? Uh, well, with Trump, this is, again, a total ego play. Uh, a good supported DeSantis in the presidential primary initially. That really pissed off Trump. So Trump, but, 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 but good is, as you said, he's a crazy far-right Marjorie Taylor Greene Republican who Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, a number of conservatives have endorsed. So I don't think the Trump endorsement in this one matters that much. But is the ultimate litmus test come down to loyalty and election denialism? Completely. Now? You, the harder you embrace Donald Trump, the better your future in the party. The harder you deny that Joe Biden won the 2020 election, the better you are in the party right now. And that's not changing anytime soon. Former Congressman Joe Walsh, thank you so much for your Thanks. time.